All right, welcome back. So in the last episode, we looked at the import function that can be used throughout your code. In this episode, we're going to use that function with React Universal Components to make loading components on demand super easy. If you need the code up to this point, get check out Universal Components. All right, in the terminal, let's install a couple of packages. I'm going to do npm install React Universal Component and Babel Plugin Universal Import. All right, so let's add some stuff to our routes.js. So let's add import universal from React Universal Component. Now we're going to set up a universal component that's going to replace these three imports. So we'll say universal component equals universal. And we're going to pass that a function. Function is going to take some props and it's going to call the import. Now this takes a string which will indicate our relative current directory. And it'll indicate what file we want with props page. So down here in our routes, let's set this up a little differently. Let's create a wrapping route. Let's remove the component gallery. Down here, let's insert a universal component and give it a prop page that takes gallery. We'll close that off. So now our routes are going to look like this. Let's do the same for about. And let's do the same for article. Cool. Whenever the router hits this path, it's going to render the universal component, which we'll call our import function. I like this interface quite a bit. It turns every route into sort of a building block. We can remove these imports now. Now in Babel RC, let's add our universal import down here in the plugins. We'll say universal import. Cool. So what universal import allows us to do is we can use the import function without using magic comments. It'll just add it for us. So we can actually remove this now. So let's do an npm run dev, see where we're at. You can see we've created some more server bundles. We'll check in on that later. All right, we have each of our JavaScript chunks emitted, as well as Lodash. Lodash is no longer using the magic comment, but it picks up the name from the file name. So now when we reload, we notice we have all three at once. Even though it worked previously, we're going to need to add a switch statement here. And we're going to have to import that from the React router. All right, so now we only have one page rendering at a time. We can see that it pulls in the gallery.js. And we switch to another one, it pulls that in as well. Pretty cool. Everything's getting pulled in as needed. So what does this look like? Well, it looks like it only has the data needed for the About page. It has our markdown right here, has our image, and then it has our component. And that's it. It has some React hot loader stuff. Let's see if that still works. In about, let's change this to an H2. And it works. Right on. Let's change it back. All right, admittedly, the CSS is still broken, but the JavaScript is updating using hot module reloading. We're going to fix the CSS in the next episode. Right now, we need to clean up our server side. In dev server, let's include a new plugin. Let's do new webpack optimize limit chunk count plugin. That's going to take an object of options, but there's only one option, max, max chunks one. Don't forget your comma. So now when it reruns, you can see there's only a dev server bundle right on. We also seem to have a main CSS emitted, so we want to clean that up as well. Up here in CSS, in webpack dev server, let's just use the CSS loader. Take everything else out, and we'll just have this one thing. So now when it's recompiled, we only have the dev server bundle. Cool. So this looks pretty great already. But if you notice, if we look into the source, we're not actually rendering markup anymore. The source is only saying loading now. We were doing server-side rendering before. So what happened? Well, it turns out that the React Universal component requires a little bit of extra massaging 
of our node externals. Node externals currently takes everything in the node directory and tells Webpack to not bundle it, to keep it as an external. But instead, we want a couple of things to be bundled. So let's exit out and create a new file. We're going to create it in config. We're going to call it node externals. Now inside node externals, we're going to basically rewrite the node externals package very simply and include only the externals we want. I'll show you. So let's pull in the file system package. And the path package. Now we're going to start by defining a const externals and telling the file system to read a directory called node modules and then filter that directory and we're going to say let's filter by this regular expression. This regular expression says as long as it's not one of these three you should include it in your externals. So these are the bin directory, the React Universal Component package, and the Webpack Flush Chunks package, which we'll add in the next episode. Now take the result of that. Let's add a reduce function. And this reduce function is going to set up the externals object in a different way. It's going to say common JS before every package and it's going to return that. We need to set up an initial object for the reduce function that externals will be added to. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to add one more external. It's got a kind of a special case. So React Dom server equals common JS React on server. Cool. Now we can do a module exports externals. And this will allow us to import our externals right here. So I'm going to say externals, I got a cons equals node externals. And down here, we'll just switch that to that. All right, that's ES6 shorthand for externals, externals like that. We'll just do the shorthand form. All right, so let's run it again, see where we're at. Compiled successfully. Let's reload in the browser. Looks good here. Now we see we have actual source. Not too big of a deal of a gotcha. Took me a little while to figure it out, but I'm glad I can pass that along to you. So what about prod? Well, let's check it out. npm run prod. When we reload this, we see that we have the loading problem again. That's no problem. Let's just do the same thing for prod server that we did for dev server. Instead of node externals, we're going to do externals like that. Then we also need the chunk file name. And we'll want to take out the extract text loader or plugins as well. Top here. All right. And do we get it out of the dev server? Let's take it out of the dev server to clean up. Okay, so prod server should match dev server in those ways. Let's run it again. Say so when we reload the source, we can see markup. All right, so it's working now. Cool. So all right, we did it. We have a boilerplate that's as good as any boilerplate out there. And since you built it from its parts, you understand how everything fits together. If you need the final code, get checkout universal components final. Up next, we can also do dynamic CSS chunks. Let's build out our blog a bit in the next episode and deliver dynamic CSS chunks for each of our JS chunks. We're really starting to see the finish line, so stay tuned.